AWS tutorial with .NET Core. Welcome to Coding Book, guys. My name is Chandrakashwaryani, and this is a basically a playlist in what we are going to do, do the practical implementation of AWS Aurora DB with .NET Core. Now, before we do the practical implementation, I realized that we should familiar with few of the terms like AWS Reasons, Availability Zones, RDS, Read Replica, Multi AZ Support. These are the terms really important to understand because only then you would be able to understand the benefit of AWS Aurora DB, why you should go for Aurora DB, what additional benefit this Aurora DB is providing over other databases uh, of RDS. So that's why these terms are really important. I will not go much in theoretical, I will not go in detail for sure. I'll focus on practical as I always do in my every video. Uh, just that they are really important, that's why I'm going to cover. After that, in the next part, we'll uh, see Aurora DB features, scaling, load balancing, fault tolerance, backup, backtracking, and other stuff. And then we'll do the demo in what at first we'll create AWS Aurora DB. Then we'll create a .NET Core microservice project. And then we'll connect that AWS Amazon Aurora database with Entity Framework Core Code First approach. And at last, we'll do the practical CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. So let's first of all, first of all, understand the reasons. So the diagram uh, which you're looking on the right hand side which has blue dots and the orange dots are indicating reasons in aws blue dot indicates the reasons are already available orange dots indicates the reasons are about to come what are reasons reasons basically data centers of your data like where your practically data will going to will, will going to reside at location so you can consider as a practical uh, 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 as a, a physical location of your data or uh, in the in the reasons now further reasons can have multiple availability zones. Now what is availability zone? So availability zone is one or more discrete data centers with redundant power networking and connectivity. If you compare uh, AWS cloud platform with other cloud platform, you will notice that most of the time they just have the reasons, the physical location of your data. But further, going further, AWS has provided a new functionality of uh, providing the availability zones as well. And the benefit you will get the high availability, high scalability of your application. At the same time, all of them are separated from each other. And that's the reason when there is any disaster or any, any earthquake or any disaster happens, you would be able to recover your data at the same time as well. So that's the benefit of availability, having availability zone inside the reasons. Reasons may have uh, up to six, actually maximum limit is six in the AWS reasons uh, for availability zones and minimum is two and uh, further yeah th that's another important thing best practice you should always choose that reason which will be close to your users not to you where your users going to reside where from where the network load is going to come then always choose that reason which at least has three availability zones uh, so that's a best practice but that's not a mandatory step but it is uh, it is recommended the reason is uh, there are few services which will provide the benefits up to three availability zones and at that time you won't be able to leverage or at that time you will not be able to you know get yourself benefited with that functionality such an example of aws aurora db so aws aurora db keep, keeps six copies of your data at three availability zones but if you have not chosen that reason which has three availability zones then you would not be benefited right that's why we should go for that uh, uh, reason aws reasons uh sorry services are reason scope that means if we have one service in one reason and if you want to use the same service then definitely your data will not be replicated it will not be synchronized and that is that completely makes sense let's have a look in the browser that's the map the blue dots and the orange dots <coughs> excuse me and here if i show you uh, like the availability zones and reasons so if i choose the asia specific and if i search for the mumbai you can see we have three availability zones over here so you can you know have the idea about how many availability zones there and after that you can choose accordingly now relational database service okay now let's suppose you have decided uh, about your database of your application that uh, I have I have finalized I am going to have a relational database that means I'm going to have a normalized database which has the foreign key primary key concepts so once this is finalized next step is that you come to AWS and create relational database service that uses a SQL as a query language which which we all are I think familiar with 
it allows you to create database in the cloud and these are managed by aws that means it will create database in the cloud and that will be managed by aws automatically types of database okay although you have finalized that i will have uh, rds but which type of rds you're gonna have amazon aurora mysql mariadb postgresql oracle oracle microsoft sql server all are relational database you have to choose or provide your choice that which db you want but one thing you would notice and the session is all about aws uh, or amazon aurora database whenever you are going to create rds database you will notice that aws is recommending you about aurora db why it is recommending we'll cover that now before before that why use rds instant only okay you can say that i'll i'll have my own ec2 instance that means i'll have my own virtual machine and i'll just download sql server maybe from net and then create my database why i am creating uh rds uh, right so there are so many benefits you will get it there are so many blockers which you cannot manage even if you are managing that's going to be super challenging for you that's why we go for the rds like continuous backup and restore to specific timestamp you are not going to worry about backups and restores right instant you click on right uh, on, on on your database right click and create backup and you know uh, schedule it you don't do not need to do in case of uh, if you are going for rds read replicas we'll just understand uh, how you can create what they are and why how they actually increase the performance monitoring dashboard and number of things you will get uh, to monitor your dashboard multi easy supports we'll see scaling capability will cover ssh one thing which is not possible that that means you will not be able to log in into your instance but that should be okay because there is no need everything is being managed by aws right now rds backup backups are automatically enabled in rds daily full backup of database backup transaction logs by rds every five minutes database can be restored at any point in time that's true retention of these automated backups by default is seven days but you can increase up to 35 days database snapshot that is something which is manually triggered by a user that supports it's 10 30 and right now i want a backup of my database and i'll i'll click on the button which exists on that database uh, menus uh, and click on snapshot that will create your backup at the same time so retention of backup for as long as you want like if you want to retain state of the db for maybe three months so you can retain the state so that's about database snapshot now important one let's understand about read replica so let's suppose you have an application and uh, you have created uh, database rds database instance which is a master instance master instance means that means you are doing the write and the read both operation uh, with the help of that but going forward let's suppose there is uh, excuse me there is so, mo so 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 much load to your application there are so many requests are coming there are millions of re requests are coming to your application what will happen it will slow down your application it will degrade your performance applications performance right now how would you solve that to solve that aws something called read replica provides you aws provides you what are read replicas read replicas will be used for the read purpose only that means instead of putting all the load to the master writer you are segregating the load to different different read replicas there are x number x number like you can create read replicas we'll see what is the x number so let's suppose in this example you have created uh two replica one is here and one is here now how the data will you know come into these read replicas oh you have just one database so okay this will by async replication what does that mean async replication and that's an important thing um, stay focused so let's suppose this is, there is a text box on a ui user clicks on the submit on a submit it goes to a database and it inserts in the rds db instance which is a master instance now after inserting that it immediately sends the response to the user maybe with the 200 ok right but in the background it start performing the async replication to all the replicas which you have already defined so now if your further user if any other user any other request is coming from another uh, another uh, maybe request then it will go to this read replica and it will get the updated data all the time but since it is a async replication for a second or even for a just a millisecond this user might see 
or uh, older data but that will be a uh, really ra rare and that will happen only for the milliseconds so, so that, that should be fine let's move forward read replicas so to horizontally scale application that means in order to increase the performance uh, you create your read replicas up to five i said x number so x is five up to five read replicas you can create it can be created either within az cross az or cross season that means you can create read replica within same availability zone or cross availability zones or cross regions an application is done async which you have just seen application need to update the connection string to use read replica of course read replica are used for read only statement that means you cannot use this for write operation it will just for the select and read operations live example again i can give you let's suppose you have an application which is which is all good and um, you have number of users with your application but all of a sudden then x team comes and uh, they want to analyze your data they want to you know do the algorithms uh, run some algorithms do the some analysis so what do you want as a project manager of course you do not want to impact your existing production data first you do not want to performance to be impacted second so both the purpose would be fulfilled by the read replica you can just create a simple read replica for uh, for your next team and provide the access uh, of that read replica to them so whatever they are doing they are just they are doing they are just reading the data that means your master data is will not be impacted and since there is there are no calls to master one so it is incre increasing your performance as well so that's a pretty simple and practical example okay now you said if there is a functionality of called read replica and it helps helps me in increasing performance then why should not i always create the read replica every time guys everything is paid here for everything which you purchase you need to pay right so it is it is important so let's understand about read replica network cost now let's suppose you have a writer in availability zone one and you have another availability zone two in what you are creating a read replica if you do so of course there will be a sync replication there will be a network cost there there will be a cost which you will have to pay and the this reason pretty simple because the data is moving from one location to another location i said before while while explaining the availability zone the different location of your data right so when your data is moving from one location to another location that of course there will be network cost but if you are creating a read replica in the same availability zone then you do not need to pay any extra or any additional cost it would be free so as per your need you can decide that where do you want to create the read replica let's cover uh, multi az so multi easy basically is for a disaster recovery let's suppose you are all good your application is really fine and um, customers are really happy and all of, all of a sudden there is a disaster earthquake or any, any 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 disaster happens you lost all your data but how would you recover your data how would you make sure that your users data are safe it will never be lost how you will make sure you will make sure by enabling the multi easy disaster recovery checkbox we'll see uh, while we work on uh, practical implementation of AWS Aurora DB, there is a checkbox called do you want the multi AG support now what going to happen in a multi AG I am going to click on back button okay consider this this is your master read replica oh sorry master instance now in the if you if you tick that multi AG support what it will do internally it will create another replica but that replica will not be used for by your users to you know do anything it will it will it will not for them it will just for the rds uh, aurora db in what they will sync rap, do the sync replication of your data again let's con same uh, understand with the same example if there is a text box a user writes anything click on save the data goes to your uh, rds uh, instance master instance but this time before it sends the 200 okay it will synchronously save the data in the database in the another replica of the database and once this is saved and then it actually returns the 200 okay and with this with this uh, uh, you can say we can avoid the uh, in, uh, avoid that problem that users will not see the older data but this is not for your users to read the data that will be internally used by the rds uh, or db when it is required when there is a disaster and we'll do the practical we'll forcefully uh, fail our master writer and we'll see how this 
automatically recovers from that location it does the sync replication we have seen one dns name one dns name is like uh, let's suppose you have master instance then is your master instance goes you know down and then uh, your recovery disaster recovery becomes your master one at that time your application does not need to change the connection string it will done it will done automatically failover in case of loss of ag yes we have seen that's why we create this a multi ag support this cannot be used for manually inter intervention I, I have already explained it cannot be used for scaling again i explained sometimes you might say i want to save the cost of my application i don't want multi az support and maybe if uh, anything like happens then i'll make use of my read replicas and i'll i'll say that hey yes you now treat as a master instance that you also can do as well depending on your requirement and your but that's possible in aws or db case so that's all about few terms uh, in this uh, session in the next we'll understand about aws or db features sorry and the third one we'll do the practical implementation thank you really much um, uh, for watching this video please share your comments uh, if you have any query any doubt just let me know uh, you can put always in the comments and please do subscribe coding uh, book that is really important that's why uh, you know uh, you uh, you can motivate me to create more videos for you so thank you for uh, staying here see you in the next video